I'm Keith Olbermann, and this is The Resistance. 60 days into his presidency, and there is only one possible conclusion. Donald Trump is a loser. Amid the kaleidoscope of the last two months of prejudice, hatred, revenge, gluttony, dishonesty, potential corruption, proto-fascism, corporate statism, this, this is perhaps the only unexpected development, the only true surprise. These people are idiots. What, in fact, have they thus far accomplished? They have left such a bad taste in the mouths of their own supporters that the Gallup tracking poll, showing as late as the 25th of January that Trump approval was at 46% and disapproval at just 45, has now collapsed to approval at 39 and disapproval at 55. With control of the White House and the Senate and the House, they got an intelligence hearing Monday that confirmed the FBI is investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government. They have a Republican member of that committee and the Republican Deputy Majority Whip both insisting Trump owes Barack Obama an apology for Trump's wiretap hoax story. They have Trump still propagating this hoax, even as it roots back through an uninformed Fox talking head to an anti-Michelle Obama conspiracy theorists with ties to the Russian propaganda network RT. And they not only still can't get Trump to let it die, but Trump tried to draw the German chancellor into supporting his paranoid delusion at a news conference, and she looked at him like he was a dick. They have let Trump attack the free press, attack the intelligence community, the judiciary, protesters, the opposition party, and the vote totals in an election in which he prevailed. They have let Trump go out in public, day after day, in setting after setting, acting as if he is not a governmental executive working for this nation, but is the owner of a company, and we are all his employees, and if he doesn't like what we do, he will fire us. They have produced a budget, cruel, draconian, stupid, medieval, and yet have somehow managed to lose the narrative on it so badly that it is actually perceived as worse than it actually is. They have sent out a profoundly and exhaustingly stupid man named Mick Mulvaney, the budget director, to publicly explain cuts by saying, quote, can we really continue to ask a coal miner in West Virginia or a single mom in Detroit to pay for these programs, unquote? without ever thinking that people would respond by wondering if it's okay to ask that coal miner or that single mom to pay the more than $100,000 a day it costs to keep Melania Trump living in New York City or to pay the approximately $3 million a trip it costs to let her husband go play golf nearly every weekend, nearly every goddamned weekend. They have so little idea even how to manipulate public opinion that they have done little to refute the conclusion that this budget eliminates Meals on Wheels for the elderly and veterans when it does not. But the damage has left Trump looking like Scrooge in A Christmas Carol asking, are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? They have tied themselves to gutting health care, changing their own promises about insurance for everybody, to access to insurance for everybody, and then finally to, no, Nothing for everybody. They have sent an amateur dressed up as a secretary of state into the middle of a hornet's nest in North Korea and China, and when the story gets out that he canceled a dinner because he was fatigued, they cannot refute that story because they themselves banned the press, except for one lone conservative website, from accompanying him on his trip. They had a national security advisor resign and proved to have been a paid representative of the government of Turkey while he was receiving classified American intelligence and of the government of Russia only a year before. They've had an attorney general misrepresent the truth at his own confirmation hearing and thus be forced to recuse himself from key investigations. They've had a senior advisor come under scrutiny for wearing a purportedly pro-Nazi, anti-Semitic, Hungarian medal and tunic to an inaugural ball. They have tried and failed twice to impose a Muslim ban with Trump's own words and the words of his minions being quoted back at him by the courts who stopped him. They have insisted that the ban could not wait a day, let alone a week for implementation, but then they waited four weeks to introduce the revised version. They have been so amateurish using those entry laws that they already do have that their operatives have twice detained the sun of the legendary boxer Muhammad Ali, and they have kept for questioning the former police chief of Greenville, North Carolina, whose first name happens to be Hassan. 
They have been so ham-handed at the border that they publicly advertise that they would separate or begin to separate toddlers from their parents at detention centers, perhaps. They have reportedly threatened to deport a man with a Hispanic name who was born in Puerto Rico. They have staggered from insisting the border wall would be paid for entirely by Mexico to insisting it would be paid for by us with reimbursements from Mexico to explaining it would be started even though they reportedly have only had enough on hand for a mile or so of wall. Under their inspiration, the Secret Service has become so dispirited or incompetent that it had a laptop full of Trump Tower floor plans stolen, were found to have had agents who took selfies with Trump's sleeping grandson, and needed 17 minutes to find a fence jumper at the White House. They have been so slovenly about security that passers-by at Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort were able to photograph him formulating a response to a North Korean missile test, and last weekend, one gawker boasted of eluding the Secret Service there in order to take a selfie with one of Trump's endless series of portraits of himself. They have done all this in just 60 days. These people are idiots! This is no longer merely about Trump's substandard and dysfunctional mental, psychiatric, or intellectual status. This is now most urgently about his unadulterated and unceasing incompetence and the unadulterated and unceasing incompetence of those he has brought with him into government. This is about the realization by his opponents and by his supporters, a realization seemingly growing geometrically every single day that the worst case Trump scenario is going to be the standard operating procedure until we remove this incompetent and unstable individual from office and rush to save this nation while there is still a chance to do so. Resist. Peace.